Welcome back to the Bonferroni channel. And tonight I'm going to show you how to, uh, some tips on how to do a good quality security film installation on your windows. So um, if you look online, there's plenty of tutorials. The companies that make these make tutorials. And then there are companies who professionally install them that show you how they work and how durable they are. And what you'll generally see is the do-it-yourselfers. Um, they install it. The optical quality is not great. Um, they do a test break and one hit it stands up pretty well, two or three, and it essentially unzips from the window frame and falls out as one piece. Um, you look at the professional installation in commercial windows and what you'll see is that um, they beat on it with the baseball bat repeatedly and it doesn't go anywhere. So the difference between those two is that in the um, do-it-yourself, generally speaking, they don't use any way to attach the film to the the uh, frame. So once it unzips, it falls away. Um, in commercial settings, what they'll do in some cases is um, use uh, silicone. They use a silicone glazing. I'm using just silicone caulking that you use for windows and doors, uh, which is flexible, but more importantly, sticks well to this and sticks well to most other materials, including plastic uh, window frames. So um, I'll show you how some tips I learned because my first one didn't turn out perfect and I figured out why. Um, to make this stick better, um, look better, and um, how to apply a good bead for the type of windows you have, um, which probably aren't commercial windows. Um, I use the tool that came with the kit. I'll include a link to the video the manufacturer has, and then of course make it look very easy. They just set it up there. I'm not going to show you the whole process. I want to show you the things that I felt were left out and I wish I would have known when I started. So let's start with some uh, demonstration breaks of little wind, uh, excuse me, uh, picture frames that I used to kind of get an idea of how it worked and what kind of caulking I was going to use. This frame's not quite too big. Alright, let's go ahead and do this again. And looks like it's still in place. No penetration. Let's go ahead and hit it again. Try not to get glass everywhere. Okay, that time it went through. Let's take a look. And in this case, the film held. All right. Now for the final test. Window film. Uh, silicon caulking this time. There was very limited area for bonding to the frame, which is plastic, and about a quarter inch or slightly more bonding to the actual um, window film. So again, we're going to strike it from the glass side, and um, don't think we got a real good hit. Actually, I'll take that back. We got an excellent hit. Silicon caulking is failing on the frame side, which is what I expected because there's not much bonding area. Let's give it another go. This time, let's just hit it manually in the middle. That was sharp. Okay, it's totally failed. So the silicon did better, but it seemed to fail on the frame side. So watch the included link to the manufacturer's recommendations, and of course, they make it look real easy when they install it. And um, also look up a professional company that does this on office buildings. I kind of watch their technique. Their tools might be slightly different. I use the included card that has a fuzzy side and a hard side. Um, I did what they said. I thoroughly, with some soapy water and a razor blade, cleaned the window. Um, dried it off, cleaned in the ga gaps around the side, dried it off, Windex dried it off, um, sprayed that slightly soapy water, just a tiny bit of soap on the window, um, unpeeled it, sprayed it, set it up there, got it all lined up, trimmed it, got it in place, um, just with hand pressure. Um, and on the first window, I did the T-pattern as recommended, with the paddle or the card trailing, and I went from the center, went down, down, and 
finished. Um, and then I found bubbles that were left over and I kind of pushed those out real hard. And then I kind of just did one final pass. The problem was I wasn't consistent. So after my first pattern, I pushed most of the water out, but there's still some invisible water in here. And if I took a bubble out here and pushed it out, anything that might have been trapped in here now might be locked in there. So what you need to do, even if you don't see anything there, each, I did three sets of passes and when I, when I learned what I was doing wrong. And each pass, or each set of passes, you get progressively harder. So I started doing medium with it trailing with a soft edge, and then I covered the hard edge with a um, paper towel, and I started putting a lot of pressure and using it, instead of trailing, almost like a knife, like I was cutting into the, and you could feel the film stretching a little bit. You could also watch even though I couldn't see any water here, I'd pass it and then occasionally I'd see a bubble or almost like a little wave develop in front of this and I'd push it out. You want a lot of overlap. So if your T started here, you want to be like here on your, your, your next um, scrape. So that way if some water is trapped back there, whether you see it or not, if it starts to climb, it's going to be harder for it to get up here out of your swipe. So one pass soft. Good overlap all the way back to the middle, all the way out, and drawing a little bit of water as I go. And I'll go down a couple of rows and a couple of rows, being real consistent, good overlap, all the way down. Next pass, paper towel, hard side, and really pushing, nice hard pressure all the way, all the way down, uh, drawing, um, and then a final pass with a lot of pressure. And after that's set for a little while, I'll go through and clean out the edges and dry them. And sometimes there'll be a little bubble trapped on the edge, especially with a little bit of dirt under these um, gaskets might creep out and cause it to lift up a little bit. So try to clean those up a little bit now that I've really forced out all that water. Um, and that's it. And that gives you good optical quality. You might occasionally, like there's a tiny little smudge up here where I did my initial T, didn't turn out perfect. Um, this window has a tiny smudge in the middle but dramatically better optical quality than my first try. The second problem or mistake I made was I tried to clean this with uh, rubbing alcohol. You can't put rubbing alcohol or Windex on this film from what I've read. Um, so just use a little bit of soapy water to clean it or a dry rag or a dry uh, shop towel to clean it. Um, in terms of the caulking, um, I'll show you. So the film has cured for a couple days and now I'm going to caulk the edges with silicone. As you saw in my testing, um, if I have a, let's see if I can get in close here so you can see it, um, if I have a, um, a very small surface area on the frame side, it's not going to stick well. So what I've done is um, I've scuffed the edge of the frame. Sorry, it's bright outside so you can't see this very well. Um, I've scuffed the edge of the frame with sandpaper um, and then lightly gone over the edge of the frame and the film with a little bit of rubbing alcohol real quick. So as I found in my testing and as um, industry experts discuss, um, if you put film, so here's our film, here's a cross section, here's our sheet of glass, and here's our window frame, you can strike this and it'll keep the broken pieces all together, but the, it'll break all the way around here and it'll essentially unzip from the frame. And so the way you fix that is caulking or window glazing. Now most of the tutorials I see they use like a, a shaping tool and they have this big commercial window frame with lots of room and they do a quarter to a half an inch each way and then just shape it so it gives you a nice clean look. And this is a silicon glazing they use. I used um, plain silicon from the hardware store. Um, the problem is on commercial, or excuse me, um, residential windows, a lot of them have this really um, very narrow trim. And so you're actually contact area. So if I run my finger across here or try to give it a rounded look, it's only going to get probably a sixteenth of an inch of contact on the frame and maybe better contact on the film, but it'll just unzip from the frame. So I needed to shape it so I have a, a wider cross section that gets me a quarter of an inch or more here and here, and then has enough thickness to withstand um, tugging pressures. So I created a shaping tool. Imagine this is a credit card. I cut it a little high at this end. Here's the bottom of it. And then um, just trimmed out, slowly sanded away a contour there, and then just looked for light between the window and the frame to get the shape I wanted. 
then you just go in and use it as a spatula essentially. Um, before you do that, you've already taped it up at the point you want the, um, the bead to end. So tape to here, tape to here. Um, lay on the silicon, which you want to make sure it comes all the way to both ends. I kind of did a zigzag motion slowly and lay it on extra thick because if there's a void and you skim over it and that void's left, um, it's going to be very hard to smooth that out with your finger or with anything. So um, do yourself a favor and just accept you're going to waste a lot of it. Um, as you're uh, scooping this off, as you're shaping it, you're going to get a ton of extra build up and fall off. And you can use a um, disposable blue shop towel to clean the film, just a dry one. And then you can put some um, alcohol, like rubbing alcohol on there to clean the frame. You don't want Windex or rubbing alcohol on the actual film. So that'll cause it to, it'll attack the, um, the plastic from what I've heard. Um, so I just used my finger here with rubber gloves and then did a little final cleanup up here. Um, had tape on this so I could get a real clean edge against the glass. Tape here for a clean edge on the glass and tape here for a clean edge on the frame. 